As we're learning more and more about COVID-19, it's clear that certain individuals with underlying health conditions, like people with type 2 diabetes, are at a greater risk of developing severe complications. So today I wanted to share with you some of the tips and emerging research that we're discovering that may help you with type 2 diabetes to prevent the development of COVID-19 as well as reduce the severity of symptoms. Hey everyone, Erin here with Healthy Mom Happy Family. And today I wanted to talk with you about the COVID-19 outbreak and specifically how it's impacting people with type 2 diabetes. The research shows us that individuals with diabetes are at a greater risk of developing severe health complications from this outbreak. So I wanted to take some time today to talk to you about how you can best manage your blood sugar during the stressful time, as well as share some emerging research that gives us a little bit of insight into the nutrients that may be protective to you with type 2 diabetes at reducing the severity of symptoms. Now, as I go into the information today, I wanna share with you that this is all based on emerging research. This is a new virus. The information we're getting on it changes every day, and new research is always coming out. So before you take any action, I want you to use the information I'm presenting with you today as educational information. Talk to your healthcare team about it, but don't take action until you talk with your healthcare team. You are an individual, and every individual has their own healthcare needs, their own individual goals. With diabetes, you have your own blood sugar goals, your healthcare team has their own individual plan for you. So make sure before you change any part of your diet, your exercise routine, your stress management routine, or add or take any new supplements, you always talk to your healthcare team first. So let's first talk about the precautions you can take with type 2 diabetes to reduce your risk of developing COVID-19. Just like anyone else, the best thing you can do right now is to continue to practice social distancing, wear a mask when you're out in public or closer than six feet away from somebody else, but also make sure you're practicing personal hygiene as best possible. Constant hand washing. Keep those disinfectant wipes and hand sanitizer with you when you go out. Just be vigilant and don't let down your guard. The more you can keep yourself safe, the less risk there is of developing this virus. Outside of the normal precautions, when you have type 2 diabetes, it is incredibly important that you focus on keeping your blood sugar within a normal range now. Not only can this help to enhance your immune system and prevent future health complications, but there's been some research that suggests people with diabetes, when they're admitted to the hospital with COVID-19, their risk of severity of symptoms and mortality rate increase when their blood sugar is elevated. So if you can keep your fasting blood sugar within a normal level, it's giving you the best odds of fighting against the virus. Now, how can you make sure to keep your blood sugar in check during this stressful time? Well, we know things like dietary management, stress management, and physical activity are all incredibly important. So when it comes to managing your blood sugar through diet, make sure you're choosing the right form of carbohydrates. Reduce those added sugars in the diet and space your carbohydrates throughout the day. I'm gonna to link to a video below that shares with you the best ways to naturally manage your blood sugar through diet. So you can use that to help you fine tune your dietary choices throughout the day. Right now, stress management is key because when stress levels are elevated, your blood sugar elevates as well. So how can you manage stress when you're already incredibly stressed during this time? Well, think, consider exercise. When you move your body, that helps to lower stress hormones. It also releases endorphins that can help lift mood and fight against stress. Maybe talking with a friend if needed, talking through those stressful situations, or even reaching out and working with a therapist if needed. And even your diet can play a role. There's certain nutrients in your diet like vitamin C and omega-3 fatty acids that help to reduce circulating stress hormones in the body. I'm gonna link below to a video that shows you how to eat your way to less stress. So you can use those tips and tricks as well to get stress under control. Now, of course, physical activity is incredibly important. When we move our body, it can enhance our immune system. On top of that, it's one of the best ways to lower blood sugar and reduce insulin resistance. So whether it's going for a short walk during the day, whether it's going to a more intense workout or weightlifting, whatever works for you, the goal really is to move your body more than you sit. So it can be as simple as just counting your steps during the day. But if you get up and get moving, that's gonna help you to better manage your blood sugar and also enhance your immune system. Now, if you can take your exercise outside with you, 
that's gonna be even better. Because if you can get some exposure to sunlight, that helps to enhance your vitamin D levels. And we know that a low level of vitamin D right now can increase the severity of symptoms when it comes to COVID-19. So sunlight is a great choice. And research shows if we get sun exposure in the morning hours, it can even help to allow you to sleep better at night. And sleep is important too. One of the best things you can do right now to help manage your blood sugar is to make sure you're sleeping at night. Quality and quantity of sleep is very important. Now I know during a stressful time when you have a lot of things running through your mind, you might not be sleeping well, but I want you to try to focus on sleep because when you don't get enough sleep at night, your blood sugar tends to run higher. It makes your body more insulin resistant. On top of that, a lack of sleep can cause our mood to be off, it can make us feel more stressed, and it can increase hunger and appetite. So if we're hungry and we're eating more, we might see our blood sugar rise because of that as well. So getting into a regular bedtime routine, having a relaxing routine at night, where we turn off electronics and eliminate distractions, that can help. And I'm also gonna to link to my video below that shares with you the natural ways to cure insomnia. So you can use some of those tips and tricks as well to help you get a better night's sleep. Now outside of movement and our dietary choices and stress management to keep blood sugar in check, it's also very important you consider some key nutrients right now that preliminary research shows can impact the severity of COVID-19 symptoms. And one of the biggest ones to look at right now is vitamin D. So there has been a link shown between vitamin D deficiency and an increased risk of severity of COVID-19 symptoms and even mortality. Now, if you don't know what your vitamin D level is, I encourage you to get your vitamin D level checked. If you're going for your regular blood work to check your hemoglobin A1C levels, fasting blood sugar levels, ask your physician if they can add on a vitamin D level too. If you find you're deficient, many times the dosing of vitamin D supplementation is based on your deficiency level. Now for the average person, taking anywhere from 1,000 to 4,000 IUs of vitamin D per day is usually safe, but vitamin D is a fat-soluble vitamin, so there are risks associated with taking too much in a supplement form. So do not take a vitamin D supplement unless you talk with your healthcare team, your own registered dietitian, to see what the appropriate dosage is for you. But we do wanna make sure that we're getting in enough vitamin D each day to prevent against deficiency so that we can reduce the risk of severe symptoms with COVID-19. One of the best ways to get more vitamin D is of course sun exposure. So if you're going out, you're getting exercise outdoors, you're getting some sunlight each day, even 10 minutes, this can be beneficial. But of course, make sure you're still using sunblock because we don't wanna trade one problem for another. Getting more sun exposure for vitamin D, we don't wanna risk sunburn, which can increase the risk of skin cancer. So be safe when you go outside, but do get some sun exposure each day as well. Now there's also some emerging research about other key nutrients and the role they can play on preventing and reducing the severity of symptoms with COVID-19. One is vitamin C. Now there's many healthcare facilities around the country that are recommending and using vitamin C in the treatment and prevention of COVID-19. They're looking at about 500 milligrams of vitamin C twice a day. Now again, this is all based on emerging research, so we can't say for sure if this is beneficial or not. But vitamin C as a nutrient is a very powerful antioxidant and it supports our immune system. So it makes sense that having enough vitamin C in the diet can enhance immune system, which can help in reducing the risk of infections and viruses across the board. Again, it's a water soluble supplement. Taking a vitamin C supplement most likely will not be harmful. However, I do strongly recommend because if you're taking other medications and supplements, you wanna make sure there's no risk of interaction talk with your healthcare team before supplementing with vitamin C. But you can also look at your diet and make sure you're getting enough foods that are rich in vitamin C as well. This can include citrus fruits like oranges, strawberries, dark green leafy vegetables like kale and spinach are all great sources of vitamin C. So fill your diet with vitamin C rich foods and then talk with your healthcare team about potentially adding a supplement as well. Another nutrient of interest right now is quercetin. Now quercetin is an anti-inflammatory compound and we find it in some foods like onions and apples. There has been some research to suggest that in other viruses, not COVID-19 specifically, but in other viruses, quercetin can help to reduce the ability of the virus to penetrate the body and the cells. So potentially quercetin could be beneficial at reducing the viral load in the body. On top of that, it's a strong anti-inflammatory compound, so it can help support the immune system. 
and it also helps with the transportation of zinc, which is a critical nutrient when it comes to immune support as well. What emerging research suggests with quercetin is taking about 250 to 500 milligrams per day to support immune health and to fight against COVID-19. However, there's very limited research on this topic, and I would not recommend supplementing with quercetin until you talk with your healthcare team to see if it's right for you. Zinc is a nutrient of importance right now too, because zinc plays a large role when it comes to immune support. Now in other viruses, like the common cold, which is a coronavirus, there has been research that suggests that taking zinc can help shorten the duration and severity of symptoms. There has not yet been research to show that in COVID-19, but because zinc can support the immune system, and there is some research to show that it can help to reduce viral replication, it's potentially beneficial when it comes to COVID-19. The recommendation with zinc is anywhere from 75 milligrams to 100 milligrams a day. But again, we don't wanna be supplementing until we talk to our healthcare team to see if it's appropriate and safe for your individual health needs. The last nutrient of interest I wanted to talk about is melatonin. Now, melatonin helps to naturally regulate the sleep cycle. So it makes sense if we're taking something that helps to support healthy sleep, and we know sleep plays a large role in our immune system, that it might help to enhance immune support and reduce the risk of developing a virus as well as the severity of symptoms. There's very little research on melatonin and the role in COVID-19, but there is some suggesting that it could be beneficial. The research shows anywhere from 0.3 milligrams up to two milligrams in the evening at bedtime may be beneficial. Melatonin though can make you groggy, it can make you sleepy, and it's not appropriate for everyone, especially if you're already taking sleep aids. So it's not something I would recommend taking across the board, but there is some emerging research that suggests it could be beneficial, so it doesn't hurt to have that conversation with your healthcare team. So that's some of the newest information when we're looking at nutrients and the role they can play in preventing and reducing the severity of symptoms with COVID-19. As I mentioned in the beginning, this is a new virus. We're learning more about it each and every day, and the research is constantly changing and emerging. So this information I presented today is purely educational. It's for you to start those conversations with your healthcare team about what might be most beneficial for you, but it's always changing. So don't take action until you talk with your healthcare team first. But remember, the most important thing you can do right now is to practice those precautionary measures, personal hygiene, good hand washing, wear your mask in public, and continue to practice social distancing. So stay safe and healthy. Comment below and let me know how you're doing. And if you like today's video, make sure to subscribe so you never miss a new video. Thanks for joining me.